Grotebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. We're gonna do something we haven't done in a while called a five minute with Eric. We've been doing one minutes for a while, but now we're gonna do five minutes. So here's what happened, true story. A client of mine calls me up and she says, listen, Eric, I got this problem. I got this person who works for me. I'm not really sure if they're a W-2 or a 1099, but they work for me and every day I watch them on the cameras in my office and I don't know if I'm allowed to have cameras in my office, but I watch them and they're texting and they're making personal phone calls. And then it's even weird. I see them taking pictures of their work. What do I do? And I said, okay, there's a lot to unwrap here. So first I need to know how many people do you have working for me? And she goes, what do you mean? Uh, like employees or contractors? I go, listen, let's just break it down. Let's start with employees. How many people do you know are on W-2 payroll? She goes, well, me and my husband, we're salaries, we're, we own the business. And then I got a couple people, two or three that are W-2 hourly. Um, and then I have four or five different people that are uh, independent contractors and I pay them as contractors, 1099. And I said, okay, now let me make a point to everyone here. The distinction between hourly salary for employees and 1099 versus W-2 for contractors versus employees, these are legal distinctions. These are not distinctions that a business owner gets to make. Now, obviously business owners get to make decisions, but I'll give you an example. If someone works for you full time, Monday through Friday, nine to five, they need to ask permission to take a day off and you provide them the tools for them to do their job. Like for example, answer the phone. That's an employee, right? You can call them a contractor all you want. You can call them a 1099. The worst is I hear people call them 1099 employees. Okay, so the reason I'm asking or how many is because the law actually changes the bigger a company gets. So if you've only got two employees versus if you have 200 employees, different laws apply. So that's why I'm asking. And the reason I wanna know between, uh, and by the way, I, I dig a little deeper. I'm like, give me the job descriptions of these 1099s because you might inadvertently have employees and not even know it, right? You could like be misclassifying these employees as, as independent contractors when in the eyes of the law, you think you've only got two employees and two contractors, but you might really have four employees and zero contractors, even though you're paying them the wrong way. So when the law takes an analysis of it, it it's gonna look at what the truth is, right? So we look at job descriptions, duties. The IRS has what's called a 20-factor test. Okay, so then the next thing is, can she be videotaping in her office with uh, all these workers? And the short answer is, in Florida, yes as long as it's disclosed and as long as it's in an area that's public. So if you have a locker room or a bathroom, you probably shouldn't have a camera in there. I think that'd be a really bad idea. But if you have a camera in the, in the waiting room or a camera in the big bullpen where everyone is, these are expected to be public places. And your employees, especially if they know that there's uh, gonna be videotaping. Um, now, audio is very different. In fact, I discourage all of my clients from doing audio recording inside. Um, there are ways to do it correctly, uh, but again, I discourage audio recording. Now, this case didn't have audio, but she was like, listen, I look on my phone and I look at my employees and I see this lady, she's always texting. Okay, so use of personal phones, use of personal devices. Here was my advice to her. I said, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna sit down and write an office policy that's going to apply to everybody. And the office policy is you are not allowed to use your phone during work hours for personal use. You can't be text messaging, you can't be calling, and you can do that on break, you can do it on your lunch break, but company-wide, if you're at work, I don't want you to see you on your phone. By the way, personal, once I was in a conference room with, in my office, and I needed to go grab a piece of paper, and I went to the back, to the bullpen, and three of my employees were watching wrestling on their phone, and they had their phone like set up right in front of their computer. And I said, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we're working. I'm like, well, you're also watching wrestling. And they're like, yeah, but we're still getting our job done. And I go, well, listen, I'm the boss and I've decided I don't like that. So here's what we're gonna do. New office policy. No one's allowed to watch TV on their phone while they're at work or any other way. You can't watch TV on your computer at all. So I made it an office policy. It's official. Then I had a meeting with everybody. I said, hey guys, from here on out, here's the rule for everybody. Then I had a one-to-one -one meeting with the per particular employee, this is what I'm telling my client to do, and I want you to have a witness and I want you to address it directly. I want you to say, listen, I've seen you, um, I know that you're, you're on your phone all the time, new company policy, from here on out, I don't wanna see it again. If I do see it again, we're gonna have a problem. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna write something up. Now it can be as informal as an email or it can be as formal as let's actually write something that everyone's gonna sign, I want a witness there. Because what I'm doing is I'm creating a paper trail so that if I end up firing her and then she claims that I fired her for discrimination, I can defend myself in court by saying, no, here's proof that I had a policy that she clearly broke. 
All right, guys, there's a lot to unwrap there. 1099 W-2, videotaping, creating office policies, um, reprimanding someone, having a paper trail. Most important thing is that she called the lawyer before she did anything, and I was happy to spend 15 minutes on the phone with her. So hope everyone's doing well. Five minutes with Eric. Thank you.